let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day, and we ask that you be glorified in all that we do. We ask that we may know you, love you, and serve you. We ask that we may honor you, and we ask that we may reflect your glory wherever we go. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, today, of course, is Friday of the 11th week of Ordinary Time, and uh, I've been talking, you know, th- this it's been interesting because this week there's been great sets of readings. You know, sometimes I look over the readings and like, what in the world am I going to do with that? I remember I was at a, um, I was at the Glastonbury Abbey. I went to Mass this before I went in the seminary. I went to Glastonbury Abbey in the seminary and there was a newly ordained priest. Now, the Abbey is Benedictine. So it's it, these are monks who live there. They live a life of m- monks. So that's how they live. And they are uh, people who pray and they give retreats and they do writings and they do praying, uh, liturgical praying and, and private prayer and everything else. It's not as strict as if we go further west to Spencer or if we head west, because actually Hingham is where Glastonbury is, and that's a little east of us. But if we head, and southeast actually, if we head west to Spencer, which is almost straight west, uh, the the Cistercian Order, which is a very, very strict order of um, monks, I guess, and or friars, but I believe they are monks, and they're also Benedictine tradition, but they live a very strict uh, rule where uh, there is the grand silence every night. There is um, just a, a living almost in a cloister, essentially in a cloister. So there are two different forms of the Benedictine spirituality in Hingham at our um, Bened- at Glastonbury Abbey and at Spencer at St. Joseph Abbey. And by the way, at Spencer is where they make the jelly that you can find in your supermarket that says Trappist jelly because Cistercians are also known as Trappists. So anytime you're going into uh, the Cistercian uh, and rather, I'm sorry, the supermarket, and you come to the jelly section, you see Trappist jelly. Guess what? <laughs> That's made by the literally made by the monks in um, uh, St. Joseph Abbey in Spencer, Massachusetts. It's also a great place for retreats, and but they're silent retreats. So I want you to think about that. You're on retreat for a week and you can't talk except to your spiritual advisor. It's doable. You can do this, but just know. The can talk means so that you can pray and, and study and uh, meditate and everything else. Meditate in Christian form, not in any other form. And um, I don't know if you knew this, but meditation as a form of prayer is older in the Christian circles than it is in other circles, just so you know. So anyway, um, and you can do that and you can learn about that and everything else, at, but you can't talk. Even when you eat, by the way, I'm getting a little off track here, but I'll tell you, even when you eat, by the way, you don't talk at all. And in some monasteries, I remember when I was at Christ in the Desert Monastery in Abiku, New Mexico, someone would read from a book. You, No one was talking. They were just eating and someone would read from a book. And just so happened, here I am from New England. I'm in New Mexico and I'm in a monastery that is so, uh, so um, off, be, off the beaten track that they, it's one of the first places that they used um, solar power to power the monastery because they didn't have access to electric power. And uh, so they used solar power here in the middle of nowhere. And um, uh, the book they were reading was A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. I thought that was kind of interesting. Here I am from New England, and I'm hearing a little bit of little bit of New England, not so much. Uh, Connecticut Yankee in King, King Arthur's Court. By the way, on the other side of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, so I talked about Hingham, which is down, it's actually Hull down, no, it is Hingham. Hingham Hall, it's in that area. Uh, down by Nantasket Beach. It's about a mile up from Nantasket Beach. Right between, by the way, uh, Nantasket and Cohasset. So it's down in that area. But if you head to the other side of the state, up by Athol, you will find another monastery that is connected to the one out in Abiquiu, New Mexico. And that's what is known as a Subiaco 
Benedictine monastery, as is the one in New Mexico. But that one is unique because when you go to a monastery, there are monasteries and it's just for men and there are others that are just for women. And as a matter of fact, there is a Trappistine, which is the same order as the one out in Spencer, Trappistines in Rentham, but that's just for women. The one out in Spencer is just for men. So anyway, there was another monastery up in Athol that is both. It's actually like two monasteries that are connected to the chapel. So if you ever go up to Petersham, which is up by uh, Athol, Petersham, Massachusetts, you'll find... Uh, oh gosh, I forget the name of the monastery. Sacred Heart, I think it is. And you will find... It's basically two monasteries on one side and another joined by the chapel. The um, nuns live on one side and the brothers or monks live on the other. And there's a chapel in the middle. Fascinating monastery story here, which I had no plan on doing. And all of a sudden I did. We'll be right back right after this. You can now leave a message for us, which we can air and discuss on this program. Just call 617-297-7452. That's 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. Feel free to call, leave a comment, a question, or even feedback, and we may play it on the air. I can discuss your comment or question as well, so give that a try. 617-297-7452, 617-297-7452. And don't forget our website, catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com, and you can also check out the parish website at stanthonyalston.org. And if you're looking for a place to go to church, maybe you might, might want to consider... Uh, a place such as St. Anthony in Alston. We're at 43 Holton Street, and you're welcome to the 10 o'clock a.m. Mass. And so there we are. So anyway, what I was planning to talk about was um, 2 Corinthians 11, 18 to 30. And what's happening is there are other people that are coming in, and they're preaching a completely different gospel than St. Paul. And they're preaching a gospel that is described in the uh, New Testament as Judaizers. And what they're actually teaching is that you can follow Christ, but you still have to follow the Jewish law, which St. Paul was absolutely against. He absolutely against because he said it's a new covenant. You know, the Jews that are following the Jewish law, that's fine, isn't it? You know, I'm, but he said for Christians, no, we don't continue following the Jewish law because as the church teaches, the law is now written on our hearts. So it's two understandings, but St. Paul didn't like the combination of the two. He said, no, we follow a, a new law in Christ. So... All these other preachers would come in and, and they were very strong preachers. You know, they'd, they'd preach powerfully. You know, kind of an interesting thing that, that happens to me is I can preach that very strong evangelical style preaching in Spanish and in Portuguese. I can't do it in English for some reason. I just can't. I've tried and I can't. So they would come in with this very powerful form of preaching and St. Paul admits that he wasn't, he was a preacher who could preach powerful things, but not in a powerful way. So what's happening is these preachers are coming across powerfully and he's saying, look, this is who I am. And in doing so, he's kind of pointing out, he doesn't say it this way, but if you read the whole passage, it comes out this way, that his preaching is part of how he is embracing Christ despite what he has been through. You know, he's been through imprisonments and beatings, but besides that, he is a child of Israel. He is a descendant of Abraham. He is, you know, someone who has embraced Christ, but he has suffered terribly for his faith. He's been shipwrecked. He's been this, he's that, and bop, 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 bop. You have to go read it. It's uh, 2 Corinthians 11, but he's been through it all, and that too is part of his preaching, and he's basically coming out and saying, you know, this is who I am as well. And these people may sound more powerful than me, but I am preaching not only with my words, 
but with everything that I am a part of, that has been a part of my life in my preaching of the gospel, all that I've suffered, all that I've gone through, all that I was before I met Christ, all of that is part of my preaching, and all of that is testifying to Paul. So he's really saying, why are you listening to these other people when I'm trying to give you the actual message? And remember, some of these preachers would come in and, as I said, they were Judaizers. So they would teach that they would have to follow the Jewish law. You know that famous famous scene where St. Peter and St. Paul uh, have a confrontation. St. Paul confronts St. Peter and said, you know, when you're at the Jews... Uh, the Jewish Christians, you're acting one way. And when you're in the Gentile Christians, you're acting another. He says, this has got to stop. There is one gospel and you're going to follow that one gospel. And this is what Paul said to Peter. So they had this bit of an argument there. Well, that's what's happening here. These other people that are preaching a a different gospel that doesn't preach this new way of life that St. Paul is preaching and they're doing it stronger. And St. Paul is saying, no, Maybe I don't preach as more powerfully as they do, but my whole life preaches more powerfully than theirs. And therefore, listen to my gospel. Don't listen to theirs. We'll talk more on Monday. Have yourself a blessed weekend. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out Catholic TV. Com. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at CatholicAudioMedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.